Hello Tangerines from Las Vegas. We've been coming here for years now and despite that, something about every trip shocks us. Whether it's awesome, scary, freaky, awkward, weird, quirky, something. So today we're going to be telling you a list of all of those things that have happened over the years or on this trip specifically so that you know what to expect when you come to Las Vegas. This is part of our series on Vegas so if you want to see more videos just like this one please subscribe to our channel. So our first thing is all the titties. <laughs> There's something about Vegas that I think all the girls come and they pull out their sluttiest, most revealing outfits and wear them all over the place. It's something about Vegas that brings it out in people and that includes the showgirls that you see on the strip, which sometimes they have nothing more than paint or pasties covering up everything. In any case, it never gets less shocking. All the titas. The next thing that shocked us and continues to is the freezing cold AC. It can be over 100 degrees outside and then they turn the temperature down to like 60 or something. You walk into the casinos and you're just freezing. Instantly. Yeah, instantly freezing. They're trying to keep you up so you keep feeding the machine money. You'd think after coming here so many times we would have memorized the casinos by now and how to get from place to place, but the strip and these casinos and hotels are so big and complicated, it is incredibly easy to get lost. One time, I was over here at Encore, leaving the club, trying to get out of the casino, and I swear I walked around so many times looking for an exit. Eventually security came over It was like, excuse me miss, you're going to have to go. And I was literally like, thank you, yes, how do I leave this casino? I want to go, I want out. <laughs> and then right over here at Venetian and Palazzo, I get lost pretty much every time I go in there. I have no idea where the exits are, where I want to go, anything like that. And for both of us, we get lost in Caesars every time, especially the forum shops, the Caesars forum oh, shops. Oh yeah, just forget it's about it. It's a maze in there. It is amazing how big and elaborate these casinos are and how easy it is to get lost in their web. It's the forum shops where we ended up going out the wrong exit and then we ended up behind Mirage oh, and yeah. then it was like 110 degrees outside. We had to walk a half hour around the hotel. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Don't, I mean, this is just pro tip only leave through the designated exits don't ever try to go out the back way or something because it will always turn out badly for you <laughs> <laughs> after all of our trips here this isn't something that surprises us anymore but speaking of how large and complicated the casinos and hotels are you would not believe how long it takes to get to the next hotel or one that's right down the road that you can see so behind us there's uh, Mirage, Caesars, there's even Cosmopolitan that you, you can see, so it might be like, oh, we can see Cosmo, let's just walk there. But there are multiple gigantic hotels, including Caesars, which is deceptively long, to get there before you, you'll arrive. So, what is that, a half hour walk yeah, to Cosmo? Yeah, at, at least. So however long you think it's going to take you to walk from one hotel to another, double or triple that. <laughs> and along the same lines of how long it takes to walk from place to place, let's not forget about how shockingly long it can take to get from your hotel room to the casino or to the strip even. It can take you 15 minutes to walk from your hotel room and get out on the street. It's crazy. Something that shocked me when we started coming to Vegas was the free drinks while gambling. When we found out about this, we're like, how do you know it's gonna be free? Like, I don't have any money. Like, what, uh -huh. what if I have to pay for this drink? How does this work? Like, how much money do I have to put through the machine? And then they just give me this drink and you just have to tip on it? Really? I remember we went to a bar at Aria where they had, like, oh, yeah. uh, machines on the bar top. And we were like, so are the drinks free if we're playing? Or we said something like, so how do we get the free drinks? And that clearly triggered him because he was like, um, they're not free, they're complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy, sorry for the wrong verbiage. <laughs> Another thing that really shocked me at first, because I had only ever heard of this in Europe, was the European-style bathing, a.k.a. Toptional or topless pools that you can go in here in Vegas. There's one at Mirage called Bear, there's one at Caesars Palace called I Forget What, and another one at Mandalay Bay. But literally, like, where can you do that in the U.S.? So it's kind of like, whoa, this is definitely a Vegas thing. Something that continues to surprise us every single trip is the crazy swings on luck. Sometimes you feel like you can't lose, and then other times you feel like you can never win. Uh -huh. Like, we're not high rollers, but one trip after a few days, we're down like 500 bucks, which is crazy bad losses for yeah. us. Especially and considering we were playing like video poker, which has some of the better odds too, in addition to slot machines, but. Yeah, so we're playing at like 25 cents a spin, right? And we end up down 500 bucks. 
But then I go out to the parking garage and five minutes later, she hits a jackpot for $580. <laughs> the next day, or I think that same day, we went to Cromwell and I hit a $250 jackpot. The next day we went to Cromwell on the same machine, hit another $250 jackpot. So that's exactly <laughs> what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it seems like you're winning, like win, winning, 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 and other times you're losing your ass. So if there's one thing about Vegas that's consistent, it's the lack of consistency. <laughs> <laughs> On this trip in particular, something that really shocked us, so we're coming back now after the pandemic, or well, we're still in the middle of the pandemic, but after everything was shut down, in some casinos, the machines are spread out so far apart, or there's hardly as many as there were before, like it's very sparse. Others haven't changed at all, like Cosmo, they still are enforcing like leave a, a machine empty in between mm -hmm. people. And I think limited in table games as well. Um, and then other casinos have every other one turned off. So it's like a totally different casino floor for a lot of casinos, which shocked us and made me a little sad because a lot of our favorite machines are now gone. <laughs> I know, yeah, that really sucks. Another thing that really shocked me during this trip was the increased security here on the strip. Yeah. And now it's not just private security in the casinos, but you also have a lot of Metro police in and around the casinos. Yeah, cop cars just posted up in random spots on the strip and increased presence of all of those. Mm -hmm. And what was really crazy was going into Wynn this weekend, it was like going through airport security. You had to take everything out of your pockets, and then you were scanned with a metal detector. They and searched my bag every single Time. Yeah, if you had a bag, it was searched, and then you have to go through a temperature screening process. And you might be wondering, why on earth is there all this increased security that hasn't been there in previous years? Is it because of coronavirus? I think maybe it's the, some casinos are trying to enforce the mask wearing and everything, but there's also right now, for whatever reason, a different crowd in Vegas, one that we've never seen before, and it's been kind of shocking to see how disrespectful and classless people are acting on the strip. The same type of people that are able-bodied but renting these uh, power scooters to get around the strip and like mowing people down to get by, taking them down the escalators and everything. It's just been interesting to see people like just throwing their trash all over the floor, pushing and shoving, getting a little bit more violent than we've seen the crowds be in the past. It's a shocking change and I hope it doesn't stay like that forever. In order to continue making videos like this one, we have to earn a living from our YouTube channel because this is our full-time job. So we like to recommend products and services that we use and love and think you'll get value out of as well. One of those is a VPN. A VPN allows us to watch content that's location restricted. For example, when we're out of the country and you have to be in the US or something in order to watch it. And it also keeps us safe when we're on public Wi-Fi, which we are all the time in Vegas. If you want to check out our favorite VPN, we've tried a lot of them, go to tangerinevpn.com and that will forward you right to our affiliate link of the company we recommend most. When you get there, use the code TANGERINE and you'll get three extra months free. Again, that's tangerinevpn.com and use the code TANGERINE. As we're walking by Caesars now, we're passing by this gigantic, truly enormous sign that's probably a couple million dollars at least. And that's another thing that shocks us every single time we come is how big and grand and fantastic all of these casinos and hotels are. And especially the strip as a whole, looking at it from a high vantage point or even looking up at these casinos, it's just like, wow. We did a nighttime helicopter ride this trip, and from that perspective, you could really see how much money is in this city yeah. and how enormous all these casinos are. We were just talking about which one to do next, and Maddie's like, let's do the hookers. Let's it's like, do the hookers. I was like, be careful, wear protection. Uh, that's not what I meant. Um, a very, very classically shocking Vegas thing is the fact that there are hookers here and they're pretty prominent, like you'll very likely meet one on a trip when you come. <laughs> one time Jordan and I were sitting together playing on a machine at Mirage and one just came up and sat down started chatting with us. She was really nice, but it was a very weird thing and I had a lot of 
questions? She wasn't that? trying to get business from us. No, well, she was just preparing for her night. Right. <laughs> but she was very nice. She answered all of my very nosy questions about kind of, you know, the stuff that she does. And But that is a pretty common thing. And to me, it's very shocking. I just don't understand, like, a hooker lifestyle. Like, a, yeah. <laughs> if I'm ever out in the casino after midnight alone, it's very likely that an attractive girl is going to come up to me at some point. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I don't think it's because they're interested in me. <laughs> there is a scam though with this too, and it's not necessarily hookers, but there's a scam where a very attractive girl will come up to a guy and be like, hey, do you want to come out to dinner with me? And their, their ploy is to get you to pl pay for a very expensive dinner by they'll excuse themselves to go to the bathroom and then never come back leaving that person with the bill. With And they went into it being like, oh, it's on me. Yeah, I, I had a really big win. Let me treat you to dinner. I'm just here by myself. I'd really love someone to go with me. Anyway, speaking of scams though, we made an entire video about scams and tourist shops in Vegas, so we'll link that on the screen right here. The next thing that always shocks us about Las Vegas coming to the Strip is that each time we come, something new shocks us. You would be surprised, because at a certain point you'd think, okay, you've been coming here for like six, seven, eight years, you wouldn't have that reaction anymore, but mm -hmm. every trip, every trip, there's something, multiple things that do. Like this time, it was all these people on scooters and uh, the different crowd that's uh -huh. here, and the different um, groups of people. The increased security, uh, and what was the other one you mentioned? Oh, the the number of homeless oh, and yeah. uh, how unruly uh, some of them have been. Yeah, the, there's always a lot of homeless people in and around the strip, like begging for money and stuff. But this time, like for one example, we saw a lady who just picked up an entire trash can and dumped it out all over the sidewalk. I've never in my life seen something like <laughs> that. So that's Vegas for you. No matter what, no matter the length of your trip or where you're staying or what you're doing, I guarantee something is going to shock you every time. Something else that shocks me about Vegas is no matter how much we eat, we still end up losing weight while we're here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, because like we were saying, it's the strip is so spread out and unless you want to spend a bunch of money on transportation and Ubers everywhere, it's just better to walk sometimes. Just get the exercise and be yeah. outside, people watch. That's one of our favorite things to do while we're here is just see whatever mm -hmm. crazy things people are doing. Which reminds me of another thing that shocks us. And hear me out on this one because I know it would seem kind of obvious, but the level of drunkenness that some people can be. Oh yeah. And yes, this is Vegas, so you would probably expect that to a certain extent, but until you see people at their most drunk, it's still like, <laughs> it's almost unbelievable that some people act the way that they do and the amount of alcohol that people consume to the, where they're literally like straight out of a movie or a cartoon, they're like, <laughs> and we've we've seen multiple people who we were pretty sure were uh, not homeless passed out on the sidewalk. Yeah, literally just laying across the sidewalk. Um, and then it's not even uh, drunkenness too. It can be other stuff. You'll see people mm -hmm. that are on an, another level. Something recently that's shocked me, and this is like not in a good way. It's the amount of weed smell and the amount of people literally smoking weed just on the sidewalk, anywhere around, like in public, even though it's not really legal to do and, that. And we've been getting in the elevator at our hotel and we're uh, getting high just from the person who was in there before us. <laughs> okay, I mean, I wouldn't say that, but it definitely does smell like pretty strong and crazy. <laughs> Prior to coming to Vegas, I had only ever gone to really low quality buffets that were basically cheap, like something under $10 and not the nicest food. So I just kind of assumed- Not the nicest as in basically pig food. Yeah, it's just low quality, filled with carbs and artificial ingredients and all that, like barely any fresh stuff. So I just kind of assumed it was like that everywhere until we came to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And something that shocked me was, first of all, the price that you pay for a buffet. But it is worth it, in my opinion, especially when you can get like buy one, get one free and stuff, because the food is like international cuisine, five star, incredible stuff that you leave there. Like you have to roll yourself out in a wheelbarrow, basically, because you just want to eat it all. We're not saying they're all five star buffets face but you definitely do have that option yes thank you for clarifying because there's some that are amazing some of our favorites are the wind buffet um, aria is pretty good mirage is a good budget buffet we're about to go try cosmopolitan because we've uh, heard great things about that one about wicked spoon but yeah just in general don't don't skip the buffets is my advice if you're 
here thinking that it's going to be kind of low quality meh food. The price, it, it, match, it often matches how amazing it is. Something that never ceases to shock us in Vegas is how expensive it can be. There's, Sticker shock. <laughs> th yeah, there's so many hotel rooms here for over $1,000. There's even one at the Palms that's $100,000 a night. Yeah. And you wouldn't believe some of the prices for food too. We were looking at a restaurant in Wynn and a, sa a single salad was over $20. And there was one time, this was probably one of the biggest sticker shocks we ever had. We were at a nightclub and we wanted some waters. They wouldn't serve us glasses of water and said we had to buy a bottle of water. And it was $30 for a 30 bottle bucks. of water. One bottle of water. It still to this day makes me mad. Like we paid that <laughs> much for water, but it's water. We needed it. <laughs> but despite how expensive things can be, another thing that shocks us is how we can come to Vegas and stay at five-star resorts for almost nothing and then use all kinds of hacks to have a very cheap and quite fun trip here. Yeah, where we get free rooms, we can sometimes get resort fees comped, we get uh, buy one get one free rewards for attractions like the high roller or buffets, mm -hmm. uh, just all sorts of things, all sorts of activities and food and anything you can think of in between, transportation even. And we've made actually probably a dozen videos at this point mm -hmm. in Las Vegas all about how to save money and have an awesome time while you're here because we're not talking about pinching pennies to the point where you're worrying about every dime that's going out there. We're talking about having like a high roller vacation mm -hmm. on a budget. So we're going balling to, on a budget. Balling on a budget. We're going to link the playlist of all those videos on the end screen here in just a second. We do hope you'll subscribe to our channel to see more videos that we make about Las Vegas and also traveling across the world. But one more thing. Go along that bell so you get notified the next time we release a new video. And we will see you soon.